Hello, my name is Goran Stanković. I'm interventional cardiologist from Clinical Center of Serbia in Belgrade. And it's my pleasure and privilege to discuss with you today and with Professor Jens Lassen from Denmark, the proximal optimization technique in bifurcation stenting. So Jens, what is POT and why we do it? Thank you very much, Goran. It's such a pleasure to be here to have this discussion because we are so fond of bifurcation, as you know. But uh, the, the case is that when we use stents, it's tubular stents. They have the same diameter in the proximal and the distal part. But when we like to treat a bifurcation, we mostly often need to put the stent across the side branch. And the anatomy of the coronary artery is, uh, uh, is actually uh, not the same diameter in the proximal and distal part because of the fractal nature, uh, the way an artery develops and divides. So every time there is a division of an artery, the distal diameter will be smaller than the proximal diameter, which makes it difficult to use a tubular stent with the same pr pressure in, in, a, in, a, in the entire balloon. Yeah, so, I understand. It's important for people also to appreciate from this figure that it's not linear tapering, but it's actually step down from proximal main vessel to distal. So how we do proximal optimization? How we do POT? Well, actually, as you just said, it's a tapering of the vessel, which means that we need to fit the stent to the, to the vessel and not fit the vessel to the stent. So we do it like in this cartoon. If we take it from the right, we put in two wires, and it's important to have a wire in each branch for security reasons. Then we place the stent in the second part of the cartoon, but we place the stent with respect to the distal diameter, which, as you can see, will make the proximal part of the stent floating in the vessel because the diameter in that area is larger than the distal part. If we do uh, it the other way around, we have a risk of dissection distally and maybe also closing the side branch. But the floating part is, is not a good thing, so we need actually to have a shorter balloon, place the balloon with respect to the side branch, the marker just above the carina, and then dilate the proximal part of the stent so it fits the proximal part of the vessel. And by this, we transform a tubular stent to a tapered stent, fitting the vessel. Yeah, if I understood correctly, so you take one bigger balloon, whether compliant or non-compliant, you position distal marker in front of Karina, and then you optimize. Uh, here is a video. Yeah, you, you yeah. can describe this animation. Exactly, but 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 as you just recapitalized, this video will just very very uh, easily show us what to do. Use two wires. We see we have a, a true bifurcation. We make only a balloon dilatation uh, in the main vessel. We would not like to touch the side branch at this stage. We implant the stent with respect to distal diameter. And when we retract the balloon, it's easy to appreciate that there's floating stents in the proximal part, which we correct with a balloon placed with respect to the carina and proximal optimization is done to cover the entire uh, top of the stent to fit the vessel. Then it's possible to open the side branch, do the kissing. And by this, we have actually turned a tubular stent into a tapered stent with an opening pathway to the side branch, scaffolding yeah. the, uh, the area. As far as, as far as I can again, uh, just try to summarize. So uh, in this example, we saw that you used short balloon, you first position distal marker in front of the carina, this is half a millimeter bigger balloon. If you go back, you inflate that balloon. After inflating distally in the carina region, you pull back your balloon and you optimize the whole proximal length of the stand. And I think this is the key because by doing this, we actually replicate natural fractal geometry for each, for each bifurcation. But there are probably some obstacles. Would you like to talk more about obstacles now? Yeah, because we can, of course, run into trouble doing the procedure. So if we look at the green panel, it's obvious that the stent is implanted with respect to the distal diameter and floating in the proximal part, which is as it should be. If we go to the right part of it, you can see that 
the stent is implanted with respect to the proximal diameter. And that introduces the first caveats, which actually pushes the carina towards the side plants. On top of that, we can have uh, plaque shift and uh, other problems. So the result could actually be that we close the side plants because we implant the stent with too high a pressure and too deep, according to the carina. Yeah. Is there is there any solution in case that uh, you, you would like to recommend in case that side branch occludes after proximal optimization? You do proximal optimization, you occlude the side branch. What happens next? Yeah, and that's if you go back and remember that we put in two wires. So after putting in the stent, we have a jailed wire, which actually goes behind the stent but into the side branch. And we can use that like a rescue technique, like depicted in this cartoon. So it's possible with a small balloon to go behind the stent slots, follow the, the jailed wire and, and, and uh, put the, uh, the, the balloon out in the side plant and make a dilatation. Even if it's difficult to have a balloon out there, it's possible to use a microcatheter uh, of some kind. So it's accessible to the side plants to correct for the uh, for the over dilatation of the stent and it's important to know this technique because it saves a lot of problems. I think it's also very important because whoever works in the cat lab we know how sometimes dramatic situations could be when we occlude major side branch patient develops chest pain we have ECG changes and then it's important to react fast. If we have jailed wire in place we can immediately do what you just nicely explained. We go with a small balloon and we re-establish flow so patient feels better, gives us some time to restart uh, with the wire and then regain access to the side branch and open side branch again. So can you show us in the visible heart model step by step how proximal optimization should optimally be performed? This is actually... Uh a video from inside an artery. And as you can see, we have two wires. We see the carina of the bifurcation, and now we place the stent in the main vessel. But look at the frame in, at the left. It's very easy to see that that stent has floating struts. If you see shortly when we remove the balloon, it's very easy to see here. here you can see that actually on the left, the stent is floating. You can also appreciate that if you need to bring in a new wire, it's easy to go behind the stent and as you can see just there. And then you can actually make a terrible crossing of the stent and deteriorate everything. So this is a critical part of the, uh, of the provisional stenting when before we have done the part. If you look into the OCT, which is of the same procedure, you can see the malar position in red in the top frame, and you can see in the, in the lower frame, you can actually appreciate that the proximal part of the stent is floating. So this actually shows us very, very clearly by direct angioscopy how important it is to do the proximal optimization to actually correct for the floating stents and, and uh, avoid the malar position. So this is, yes, actually what happens when we do osteo left main stenting. You can imagine if you don't optimize, this is what happens. We don't see it on angiography, so we frequently go either completely behind the stand or we go in and out. You see that wire from outside went into the stand and then into the circumflex. This yep. is why we insist so much and we try to promote proximal optimization as the mandatory step of each provisional bifurcation stenting technique. And what's yeah. next? Uh, what you have next? Yeah. Here we can see how actually we do the, uh, the proximal optimization. Again, a shorter balloon, non-compliant, fit to the proximal vessel diameter, still a jailed wire, and let's see removal of the balloon, and then you can appreciate how nicely everything is scaffolded, but the side branch is actually uh, now jailed. After that, we do a repot to correct for the kissing we just did before. 
And the report is very important. It's important to place the balloon in the correct uh, place. So, next slide. Oh. We can see the result. Goran, what do you think of this? Yeah, yeah. what happened here? You are <laughs> pushing all the metal into the side branch. What happened? You, 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 you made the, yeah, you made probably two distal balloon inflation. Please help us understand what happened and lead us to solution. Yeah, exactly, Goran. Because what happened here was that we made a too deep pot. So all the nice reconstruction of the anatomy, we actually ruined because we were not carefully positioning our pot balloon. We went too deep and pushed the carina towards the side brands. So now we actually have to go back, do the kissing and do a repot. And next slide, you can see uh, the result. This is the same situation after a uh, 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 kiss and a repot. And now we have corrected the anatomy again. So this was a pitfall, but there are solutions to correct for it. Yeah. So, so you can see if, you make, if you make mistake and if you are aware that you made mistake, you can again recross, open the side branch and redo kissing. And after kissing, probably perform final pot a little bit more proximal. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so it's possible to correct. It's not uh, something that uh, now when we understand the mechanism, we are able in the cut lab to be very careful and to position final pot balloon more proximally. Exactly. And what we have done now is actually by these steps and, and the solution of the potential pitfalls, we have the technique to do the first part of the prodigal stenting with one stent which actually fits to the anatomy and opens the stent to the side brands. And that gives us the possibility to move further on with two stent techniques if we like, or stop here if we have a nice result. So here we actually have uh, the result of what we were doing. It's the same stent that we have been looking at uh, all through this procedure. You can appreciate that on the left part, we have the distal part, which fits the distal part. And then in the other end, we have the proximal part, which fits actually the proximal vessel. And we have opening of the side brands very, very nicely. And you can appreciate how easy it is to go out to the side branch if you need to access that area later on. You can also appreciate that there is a very, very fine tapering from the proximal part to the distal part. This tells us that we have been very carefully done a proximal optimization technique to take care also of the proximal, more proximal part of the stent to avoiding what you could call a bottleneck if you actually miss the most proximal stent struts and don't get them actually properly opposed which is basically the last pitfall in this technique, Goran. Yeah, if I may add, here you can also appreciate that if you are able to do pullback maneuver when you are rewiring into the ostium of the side branch, and if you really reach the most distal cell, when you open balloon towards the side branch, you see that you push some metal into the ostium of the side branch, and you also partially scaffold and stand the ostium of the side branch, with the same stand from the main branch. So, Yanks, thank you very much for really excellent presentation and thank you very much for leading us through this very important concept in bifurcation PCI. And it's part of all our European Bifurcation Club consensus documents. And I really would like to encourage every bifurcation PCI at least to perform proximal optimization and then decide whether or not to do kissing. So dear friends, I hope that you enjoyed this presentation and I thank you very much for attending.